Welcome back to HealthWise. With us is Dr. George Ray Williams, uh, spinal surgeon with OGH Healthcare Systems. Uh, Doc, we were talking about spinal surgery. Uh, first of all, that's, you know, you don't see many, and I, and I say young doctors, uh, going into that field. What made you decide to yeah, I actually, I actually injured my back back in 1987. You can't tell, but I used to be a big weightlifter. Really? <laughs> yeah, and I was really into it. And I was a, uh, I was doing a heavy set of squats one day when I went down. You know, I, I had severe back pain, and then like most people, which goes away, I kept thinking it would, and it never got, it never did. Mm -hmm. Then it got to the point where my leg was killing me, and my and my foot was getting really weak. Uh, so luckily, in our family, we actually had a neurosurgeon. And uh, I went and saw him, and I had a condition called spondylolisthesis. That's where one of the vertebrae slips forward on another, and it trapped my nerve. And uh, anyway, to make a long story short, I actually had to have surgery to myself back in the early 1988. And because of that, my interest developed into it, and then I, I dedicated uh, my field of interest to you know, spinal afflictions and treatment okay. thereof. All right. Well, that's a that's a good reason to start. You know, I mean, because you saw that you know there was a need for that. Because, like I said, once there's not really a lot of people that specialize in that. I mean, you know, not around here anyway. Yes, sir. And we're glad to have you here in Opelousas because that I think that's needed. Because uh, a lot of times when people get injured, first thing they think is. I got to go to Houston or I got to go to New Orleans. You know, they don't think that they can get anything done here in Opelousas, you know, or the surrounding area. Uh, Doc, tell us a little bit about uh, how, how dangerous, you know, when you talk about spinal surgery, uh, is it, I mean, you know, you, you hear horror stories or you, you, you know, I mean, and of course on TV, you don't, oh, sure. you know, we don't know exactly what it entails, but how in depth and dangerous is a spinal surgery? Yeah, well, spinal surgery is uh, is a major form of surgery, and like any major form of surgery, there's you know it's significant risk involved. But today, what we do in order to maximize patient safety is uh, number one, um, we do what's called neural monitoring. That is, we we monitor uh, all the nerves of the spinal cord and all the nerves going to the arms and legs so that during the surgery it's being constantly monitored so that uh, if you're either approaching danger or a potential complication that would have occurred before this they can they can kind of alert us and let us know you know to kind of back off and take a second look uh, the other thing too is the majority of our surgeries are done under operating microscope that now the microscope is just a tool it doesn't do the surgery but the good thing is that it allows for much better lighting illumination, but it, it, its power is like 400 times. In other words, instead of whatever you're seeing is like 400 times amplitude, so you can see really well. And, be, and through that, uh, we can navigate a pretty safe field, you know. And most of, the, most of the approaches to the spine is pretty standard, whether you're going anterior, that is through the front, or posterior through the back, the world describes. So with, with those three conjunctions, uh, spine surgery is, is about as safe as it can be. Okay, uh, that's for the audience that uh, worry about you know the dangers because you know you hear I guess on TV a lot of times you hear oh if they make one little mistake man that's it lights out you know but uh, I guess too all spinal surgery or all spinal injury I want to say is not the same so uh, that being said. Uh, I would say that what do you think is the worst? Is it is a neck, you know, I mean, it's a cervical, uh, lumbar, you know, thoracic. Oh, or, sure. Uh, which would be more difficult in your opinion about? Yeah, well, as far as, uh, you know, patient outcomes go, the, the higher the injury, the, the worse of the catastrophe because anything that gets hit affects everything below, you know. So that's why someone who has a high cervical injury uh, that can be extremely devastating. They can be quadriplegic, even ventilator dependent, as opposed to someone much lower. Then uh, they can be more functional, almost ambulatory, and try to be as self-sufficient as possible. So the, the lower the injury, usually the, the, the better the outcome. Now that being said, the single most important thing usually is what you have starting in, starting, in other words, how the patient comes to you. Uh, is a, almost always defines the prognosis. If they're moving everything, uh, good function, then usually most of the time everything's going to be great. 
or as opposed to someone that comes automatically quadriplegic or severely injured from a high injury, then those outcomes aren't as good as we'd like to. And, and from that instituted like, uh, you know, spinal cord injury, uh, not only protocols, but future development and treatment. Anywhere from what you saw, like the the athlete that injured a, la a year ago, when they automatically instituted, you know, ice cold saline, to trying to institute gene therapy. So there's a lot of things, a lot of field of interest trying to try to not only regenerate spine injury because that's very difficult, and that's something, hopefully in the years, will develop. Uh, because any type, any time you have a neurological dysfunction, that could be extremely devastating, not only to the individual but also to the caregiver, caregivers and the family members themselves. They have to help take care of them. Right. So, uh, you know, you mentioned regenerative uh, spinal uh, therapy. So, so at this time, there's really not anything. You know, we can't regenerate the spinal cord right now, you know, I mean, we aren't at that stage yet. Right? Yeah, I, I tell you, the, the biggest problem with the nerve is that uh, the, the higher the level of uh, function of, of tissue, uh, the, the less regenerative capacity it has. Like if you cut your skin, even though it heals with a scar, it heals pretty quick. Right. You tear a muscle, it heals with scar. You break a bone, the bone regenerates. So mm -hmm. it, it's hard for people to realize, well, you know, if I if I injure a nerve or a spinal cord, how come it just doesn't grow back? The problem is, is that our, our nervous system uh, doesn't really have the capacity to regenerate. That's really true for the central nervous system, that is your brain and your spinal cord. Now, if you, if you injure a nerve, uh, the further you injure it, the better the chance of recovery because it only has to grow a short segment. Whereas the, the higher it grows, the higher level of injury, the more it has to grow. And while it's growing, uh, the tissue that it innervates, the muscle atrophies and withers away and loses its function. Because uh, people don't realize it, but nervous tissue actually supplies to your muscles a, um, a nutritive aspect. That is, it keeps feeding the, mus the muscle for st continued stimulation, and that allows our muscle to continue to function. And so when a nerve is injured, that muscle either atrophies, weakens, or, or, gets, or becomes dysfunctional until the nervous tissue is restored. And because of the lack of regeneration capacity, or it's very weak, that's why a nerve injury is, is extremely devastating. And, and that's why when an individual does get injured and there is some type of significant compression or weakness, you want, you want to try to treat that individual and relieve that compression because the quicker you relieve it, hopefully will, uh, has a greater chance for recovery. Okay. All right, Doc. Well, we're going to talk a little bit more about that uh, after this brief message from our sponsors. Yes, sir.